Hello, I'm Michael Bliss, Emeritus Professor of History and the History of Medicine at the University of Toronto. I'm in conversation with Dr. John Evans, a towering figure in Canadian medical education and biomedical research. These discussions are part of a series of visual autobiographies sponsored by the Friends of the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. In the 1990s, Dr. Evans began to play a remarkably creative role in the expansion of biomedical research in Canada. First as founding chair of the Canadian Foundation for Innovation, and then as chair of Toronto's Mars Discovery District. In these discussions, Dr. Evans reflects on his uh, aims with these organizations, their successes and failures, and he also gives us an overview of his remarkable career. So that's a, that's a very broad um, vision and um, you've talked a bit about, of course, problems of time span in all, in all of this and that now, here we are in 2010 interviewing you uh, 58 years after you graduated in medicine and now um, I, I, I want to uh, ask you if you can reflect on your own career, your own time span, and um, people say uh, that you've been a visionary uh, in Canada in the kind of leadership you've given in a wide variety of areas, uh, from uh, deaning, being a dean of medicine now to uh, presiding over a grand vision. If you were, or when you write your autobiography, how would you see the underlying vision that drove your career? How would you describe it? Uh, I, I think that what I would probably say is uh, it's important to catch the wave. And uh, by that I mean it, I don't think there are very many totally original insights that, uh, that I had uh, and so on. It's that you see a problem and that um, then you would match that with what if, uh, as, a, as a, could you resolve this problem? Is, is it the problem of medical education which had become stagnant, uh, really? Uh, that uh, most people would agree with that, uh, even at the time that it wasn't, it was not very effective and there wasn't much innovation going on in the in the curriculum and so on. Um, but uh, if you say uh, there's, that's a problem that needs to be that might need to be dr addressed, and here's a, a wave: the Royal Commission on Health Services, the Hall Commission, what not had uh, had recommended establishing new medical schools and so on. So there's an opportunity and so to, to, to package this in a way that it's an exciting opportunity and catches a wave of innovation um, I think is probably what's happened in most of the times that, uh, that I've uh, had some degree of success. Uh, I suppose uh, though we all know that chance favors the prepared mind you weren't just lucky. Well, a lot of it's timing. Um, I think really, uh, uh, and, and that is luck, uh, timing is luck. But um, it, I, I don't think there's anything that I've done individually that uh, matches what um, the group of people uh, that have developed almost every one of these uh, projects, whether it's CFI or whether it's uh, the Commission on Health Research for Development or the McMaster Medical School or the other areas. The, you try and assemble a group of people who would uh, be up to the challenge. They're prepared to take a risk because most of these innovations have higher risks than staying uh, in the, con uh, the conventional system. Uh, you've got to create a, an, an, an environment that they want to be there, want to come, and want to be there, 
and that they will really contribute, that they'll bring ideas and innovations themselves and to be part of uh, something. So I guess what I would say, uh, I think the, th the element that maybe uh, I've been luckiest is in uh, being able to mobilize uh, people who could share a vision of going forward and who uh, who would give the, the energy to it. They would accept it as their own vision and uh, attack it with the energy that uh, is necessary and, and st staying power, which is necessary to get these new, prog new and innovative programs off the ground. And they do, it isn't a, a one year or a two year or a three year issue. It really is uh, uh, five to ten years to get, I think, to get an, an important development uh, up and running. It's easier to conceive of the idea than it is to implement it. And so you've got to hang in there and uh, try and make sure that um, you facilitate uh, the effectiveness of a whole lot of other people. Uh, some people would say that it's not just luck that you come to be surrounded by groups of good people wherever you work um, and that in fact for example one of your great strengths is the ability to spot talent. Uh, do you have a comment on that? Did you, did, w this seems to me from what you said to have been a, always a focus of what you have done, trying to find good people to put into to key positions. I, th I think that's exactly what uh, just, just think of uh, lining up uh, George Connell to do a survey across the country to, just uh, for CFI and so on. And, and George, with his particular skills, unmatched uh, in what he was able to create and so on. If we hadn't had George, uh, we probably would have had a different looking beast. So, but uh, I think what I found out from in McMaster was that um, that there was a tendency to relapse to a previous sort of style, a style that the individuals had uh, perhaps uh, experienced in their student days or in other, uh, other early stage in their professional life. And that um, if you want these, uh, something like as big as the change for the McMaster Medical School approach, if you really want to do that, the scope of activity requires a lot of people, a lot of really good people, and they have to be encouraged and 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 supported, uh, so that if they take risks, uh, which you want them to take risks, intelligent risk, they don't get crucified and they, uh, for doing so. So, uh, making sure that you can provide an environment that still encourages risk taking, sensible risk taking. Uh, uh, is is crucial, and so because that's the excitement of of uh, the of the opportunity, and the fun. It, if it isn't fun, you may be on a very short leash, because uh, uh, you do create a culture. Uh, the the interaction of people who are are younger than their confreres and almost all the other institutions. Um, uh, and in one way less certain, but in another way more open-minded. Uh, it really, uh, it, you really do see a sense of excitement that emerges uh, in those areas. And if if the people aren't there uh, with you mentally, morally, and culturally, if they if, if they're not there, they'll move on to something uh, something else. So there's an, a sort of sorting that goes on self-selection uh, that uh, is, is an awfully important part of the process. Um, you've, you've seen this said about you that you're wonderfully well connected and that you uh, uh, tap into uh, all of the important networks in the country and I'm trying to phrase a question not very adequately about the use of connections and networking because um, I, I, I mean to suggest that you've used that constructively do you have thoughts on that? Have you have you thought of yourself as using using networks, using connections? 
uh, I think I'm very anxious not to reinvent something. Uh, I, I don't think that's innovation. Uh, and yet that's what we, uh, what we tend to do is, uh, is um, settle on a small patch that isn't uh, working quite properly and, and, and help clean that up. And that's fair, but uh, I, think, um, I think you do need to get support for, uh, for, from networks uh, for major innovations because uh, as you, you, you're dealing with the scale of risk taking and scale of, of management of, uh, of the vision and unless you have uh, unless you can continue to expand those areas uh, you'll just have a uh, uh, a pilot project that, uh, that's on the library shelf when the accreditation committees turned to the medical schools and said you should have at least some portion of your program in problem-oriented, evidence-based uh, thinking. That that was a, that w that was now affecting the the new institutional network, and somebody independent has looked at this and said, "This is a good thing to do," and uh, and so they've brought it, taken it into their administrative network and, and their developments. So yes, uh, I, 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 not consciously, but I think unconsciously, I look for the, uh, the collection of people, the kinds of individuals that uh, have their own networks and bring their networks to be part of uh, the uh, program going forward. Um, this may be a, an, an irrelevant question, but um, you've worked smoothly with, uh, at, at so many layers, with, and particularly with governments and with politicians. At, at one point, you allowed yourself to be, a, I guess, a card-carrying member of the Liberal Party. Uh, do you think that being identified as a member of a political party um, mattered or uh, for weal or woe? I don't know. I, I was an unsuccessful uh, uh, candidate for political office, so uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, the political side would uh, carry much weight. Um, I guess I, I never felt partisan about most of these areas. I, I, I think I think there's a real danger if you're if you're strongly partisan. You may get some benefit because people think you uh, are uh, a liberal by persuasion. Uh, well, I am. Uh, so uh, whatever that means, it's uh, something that played very much into the international work that I did. And at international level, it really wasn't due to political parties. It was uh, uh, really an attempt to look at how one might reach uh, the five billion uh, population that uh, in some way that approaches uh, equity. Mm -hmm.